Hey YouTube, 1986 Fox Body Mustang can be replaced in the heater core that's leaking. And I figure if I'm gonna go through the trouble and replacing the heater core for the price difference, you know what, I just picked up a blower motor, got that for actually. So I got the heater core from LMR, late model restoration. Uh, and I got the blower motor, I actually found one uh, for uh, this car on uh, at Rock Auto. So I got that along with the cage that goes along with it as well. I figure for the price, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, just item to note, my vehicle does not have air conditioning on it. It's a different heater core and it's a different blower motor than the air conditioned models. So they are not interchangeable. So if you have a version with air, with air conditioning, you have to get the air conditioning parts. If you do not have air conditioning, you have to get the ones without uh, air conditioning. So anyways, otherwise you're gonna be running into fitment issues. Uh, so I already started off here. Uh, actually, I removed the battery connection being gonna be doing some electrical work. I removed the two hoses inside the engine compartment uh, they came off very easy, uh, being that I just replaced those uh, hoses a couple of years ago. Uh, if yours are stuck on because they've been on for a while, if you get some pump pliers and just put it on while it's on the heater core and give it a good twist, uh, those should pop out for you. And I can put a pan underneath there to catch the fluids that are draining down. And just to make life a little easier for me later, I actually put some labels on these. So even though the two hoses are different sizes for the in and out of the heater core, uh, just make life a little easier for me for when I put this back together later so I know which one's the driver's side and the passenger side one. And on top of that, I had to disconnect the battery because I got green LED strip lighting underneath the dash. Uh, so uh, it'll make it really hard to see if the lights are shining in my eyes when I'm working underneath the dash here. So uh, I'm going to be accessing this down here. I'm thankful that I do not have air conditioning. Uh, so I'm going to be removing the glove box next and... Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. And the manual says that when you're gonna be doing this to take the uh, temperature setting inside the vehicle and put it to the warm. So I'm gonna be doing that as well. So uh, start, let's start off and uh, we'll take the glove box apart now. Okay, to remove the glove box, you need a Phillips screwdriver. And there are three slots underneath here that are, you'll see where the, the dash is a little bit recessed right here. Here we are, there's the first one I removed already, and there's actually three of these. So you can remove those three screws, and that should remove the hinge on the bottom of the glove box so that you can remove it. So once the three screws are removed, uh, just open the glove box, and that will come right out for you. So there we are, first step, glove box out, and there's a bracket in behind here, uh, in the black back of the glove box, in the center, you'll see it that needs to come out next. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so I've removed the bottom bolt that holds this bracket on. It's a 7 16 And there's another 7 16 way up top there. And uh, the only way I can access it is by using a 7 16 open end wrench. And you gotta work at it really slowly just to loosen it off. I'm not gonna remove it because I have no idea how I put it back on if I do take it out because there's no room up top there at all. And you'll see if you have to uh, deal with this yourself. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, there's four bolts. This is the, this here has got to come off next, the cover plate and the heater course right in behind here. And those are five sixteenths bolts, I believe. So I'm gonna take those off next and we'll see what's in behind. So being I got this loose and I'm just gonna hopefully be able to move this off to the side enough uh, so that I can remove this. At least I'm hoping it works. All right, so sorry about the shadow there, but uh, we're working in a tight spot here. All right, so I've got the four bolts removed, and I'm going to move this bracket off to the side, and this should pull straight out, and it is. And there it is. There is the heater core right here. So uh, next thing I do, got to re remove that. And I'll have to do a little reading up, see what I need to do, or see if it comes straight out or not. And uh, we'll see how that goes, and we'll get back to you. All right, so got the four bolts up, and I pulled the cover plate out, and actually the heater cord just popped right through really nicely. Uh, I was was catching on the side here a little bit. So actually what I did is I got a, a painter stick uh, from inside the house, and I actually put it underneath. I got a little screwdriver on the side there, just kind of wedged it clear of the edge here. Yeah, because it was kind of jamming on that. And as soon as I got it clear of that, it actually pulled right through. And this bracket I had here earlier that I couldn't remove, actually I pushed it off to the side enough that I got the heater core right out. So that worked out really, really well. Uh, okay, so 
before I put the new heater core in, I just wanted to take a look and see what I need to do to get the uh, uh, get the new blower motor in here as well. Uh, so at some point I got to do this as well. So I don't know if I got to do that maybe first or if I do that after. I'll just got to see the order of things. So anyways, heater core's out. Uh, guys, uh, an hour. It's all it took it, <laughs> at the most. So really straightforward if you do not have air conditioning. So if you do not have air conditioning, you know what? This is one of the times you'd be really thankful. I've seen what's entailed with uh, taking the dash apart on vehicles with air conditioning to replace the heater cores and it's uh, it's an eight hour job so all right uh let me check on the blower motor see what i need to do with that and uh we'll get back to the next step okay so to replace the blower motor uh to the right of where the heater core is there's a cover plate and you can see that was right there and there's seven uh bolts that need to be actually screws that need to be removed and those are 5 16 heads. Uh, six of them are easy to get at, uh, but then there's actually one that's at the very top on the left here, and that is very awkward to get at. You'll need a, actually I used a small 5 16 box end wrench to get that out, and that worked out pretty good. So that gives us access to the uh, blower motor and the cage that's on it. So the next thing you need to do is remove the little clamp in the center there on the shaft to remove the cage. Uh, uh, the fan part of the motor and then that'll come out and then we get access to screws to remove the motor so we'll I'll take that out and uh, we'll see how that goes okay so I got the fan cage out uh, it's right fastened to the shaft on the motor uh, I had to bust the thing to sing to get it out uh, but before I did take it out I just turned it uh, put the battery back on real quick turn the fan on just check rotation on this uh, so that way, when I put the new motor in, uh, that at least we know that the rotation is the same way as well, because I got to do electrical work on this, on those DC motors. If you hook them up backwards, they will actually won't run backwards. So once you get the cage out, uh, you can access the motor. And there's three more 5 16 bolts that need to come out, and uh, that'll bring the motor out. And then you just got to disconnect the electrical connection uh, to the motor, and we'll see what that looks like in a sec. Okay, so the old blower motor came out pretty good. Uh, hardest part was actually getting the uh, the fan part off because that this is right fused to the uh, the blower motor. So if you're just replacing your motor, you may want to think about getting a new fan cage that goes on that as well. And I'm looking at the new one here. Uh, so there's a flat spot in the, on the shaft, and uh, the new one here you can see here. Look, there's got a little Allen key screw that'll go in that'll fasten onto the onto that and uh yeah so there's gonna be the new the new one to replace the old one uh i noticed that my new electrical motor blower here uh, it looks like in shipping it got pinched so i'm gonna put some heat shrink over that cover that up so i don't get any shorts and then what i'm gonna have to do is where the motor was connected in behind uh, there's the plug that was connected to the old blower motor i'm gonna have to actually cut this off and again, that's why you want to disconnect the battery. I'm Then I'm going to connect these, probably use some splice connectors, and just connect those to the new motor. I'd like that. My preference is always to solder and put heat shrink on, but uh, there's not a lot of room in there. So because of space limitation, the crimp on connectors will be probably the next best thing. Uh, one of the things I noticed as well on the old motor on the back, there's a little rubber seal. You'll want to take that off and put that on the new one. It'll just... Uh, Keep it from vibrating and keep it make it a little quieter when it's operating. So I'm uh, going to clean up this motor, put the do the electrical connections on the new one, put it in, and uh, then put the new uh, fan on there, and uh, just, then just give it a quick test to make sure it turns the proper way. And if that's good, then I'm going to put that uh, shroud back together that I pulled off on the right hand side, and then I'm going to put the new heater core in, and just essentially everything reverse. So halfway there and uh, actually the hardest part so far was getting the uh, the fan part off of the blower motor but that's right seized on there so I had to break mine off it's, it looks like it's almost glued on there or uh, probably maybe just over the years it's just kind of worked worked its way on there and it's pretty solid it's not coming off so anyways make you aware of that so all right uh next part here we go Okay, so uh, what I did is I actually went out and bought a plug. Uh, I figured, you know what, if I'm going to put this thing together, uh, plus just soldering it on, I bought a plug and I actually soldered, put some heat shrink on that. Uh, the connector for the blower motor, that's on the vehicle here. 
is just to the front here and on the right hand side so that just plugged into there uh, to remove that it is a uh, you're just gonna need a flat screwdriver to pop the bottom lip out a little bit and that just slides right out and so that will feed in through the hole here in the left and into the back where the blower motor sits uh, and what i did as well is i plugged the new blower motor into the vehicle made sure that the new fan was rotating the same direction as the old fan was and that everything's the same way that way and i noticed uh, one thing along the way here so you don't need to remove the fan off the blower motor to remove it there's actually indentations uh, three of them uh, and you could actually get your socket set in there with the 5 16ths to remove the bolts to remove the blower motor so you don't need to remove the cage so uh, that way if you're just replacing the motor and you don't have a, a new cage uh, you could do that a little more carefully and uh, without tearing apart like i did and oh here's the part numbers uh, for the uh, that i have for this year that is the motor and that is the cage uh, i got this from rock auto and uh, those are perfect fits uh, so anyways to replace those the old one was plastic for the cage and the new one is actually metal so i'm going to put this back together now uh, put the blower motor back in and then give it a quick test make sure that it's working okay uh, just make sure none of this wire here is cross wired uh, from within the connection or anything like that and I'd rather find out before and later oh and by the way as well uh, so underneath here because the heater course leaking i had probably about half an inch of coolant underneath here so i had to clean that all out as well so a uh, nice catch basin in there for rat fluid. So putting the new blower motor back in now, gonna give it a quick test and we'll see how it goes. So the gasket that was in the back of the motor can keep slipping off. So what I did is I grabbed uh, one of the kids uh, glue sticks and put a little bit of the, uh, the paste on that around the lip uh, where the gasket sits and just to sit the gasket flat in there. Uh, those two tabs is where the gaskets go through to line it up and those are the two motors that not the other ones but the inner ones where the motor sits uh, didn't notice that when i take it off uh, but sometimes you notice things when you put it back together so that's what those two holes on the uh, are not the other ones but those two inner ones right there so those will be sitting that's helped the motor line up right there all right so the bore motor is in and uh, put it just a small lock a uh, drop of loctite on the uh, on the shaft screw on that one there just so it doesn't come loose and we got going low speed going the right way and there. so the blower motor is good and it's actually blowing a lot more than the old one did so i'm kind of glad to replace that now so i'm going to put the housing back together on that and the next step is to put the heater core back in real quick the the wire the factory wire for the blower motor is like 16 gauge uh, had i known that i would probably bought a lighter gauge uh, plug uh, to put in on that i got 10 wire in there but anyways that, that'll never burn off uh, so if you're buying yourself a new plug uh, to connect the new blower motor uh, all you need is 16 gauge if you're looking for a wire size for the new plug So I'm ready to put the new heater core in. And what I did is I just cut off that uh, little bit of the gasket material off the old heater core and just put on top here, just to fill the gap between the ductwork here and where the firewall is. Because I noticed that there's a little bit of a gap there. So I'm hoping that'll fill that in all right. Uh, item to note, there's uh, two, sides, two sizes of pipe here. There's a large one and a small one. The large one goes towards the driver's side of the vehicle when you put it in. So that slid in really easy, just like a fridge drawer. Uh, so anyways, so that's in there now. You'll notice it sticks out a little bit, not a problem, uh, because the cover plate actually is recessed a little bit uh, out so that uh, there's, that's fine, that'll work good. Uh, just make sure that when you put the cover plate on that the heater core is actually properly seated in here. And if you have it right, it should seat properly on the, uh, on the vehicle. All right, so the cover plate went on really well. Uh, there's a couple plastic tabs, uh, one on the left side, one on the right side at the top to help you get it lined up properly and uh, seat the heater core and the cover plate there. And that worked out really well. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this uh, bracket back on, put the glove box back in. Before I do that, I'm gonna clean up some wiring in here so that things aren't hanging underneath. You're gonna get a nice wire loom in there, uh, kind of make it a little better anyways. And then in the engine compartment, still need to 
put the uh, the heater core hoses on. Uh, so I'm gonna attach those on here and uh, I'll start it up and then uh, make sure I top up the fluids. And there it is, that is it. Uh, whole job start to finish with a blower motor and the heater core on an 86 Mustang with no air conditioning. This, I'm so thankful I do not have air conditioning. I've seen videos of what's required to do that. And I am, at this point, you know what? I'm really glad I don't have air. So anyways, under two hours, you can do the heater core and the blower motor. Uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, hopefully this video helps you guys and happy motoring.